You're listening to the Arisha Wisdom Podcast, Session 9. Welcome to the Arisha Wisdom Podcast, where positivity and spirituality create an enhanced life's journey with the wisdom of Ifa and Arisha. I am your host, Iya Omileti Olubuni. Welcome to a very special episode of the Orisha Wisdom Podcast, where we discuss witchcraft. Today's topic is, not everything is witchcraft. Yep, we're going to talk about it today. There is a fear that someone is throwing on me. They're doing witchcraft on me. And I am going to cover this with eight things that you can do to help with that way of thinking. I love strategies. I love actionable items. So I'm going to share these eight strategies with you. With that, let's jump right in. Let's say that you go to a botanica or whoever, and they're going to read you And they're going to read you, they're going to read your palm, they're going to read your tarot cards, and they cringe, you know, they bend their eyebrows, you know, when something's wrong. And then they look at you and tell you, someone's throwing on you. You see here, the cups are facing you, and the daggers, and that speck of water over there. That means witchcraft. Your heart stops for a bit. You hold your breath. And you're not breathing. And you get that sinking feeling in your gut like, oh my God, everything is so horrible and I'm going to die. So she says, don't worry, I can help you. You're going to pay me $150 and I will anoint this special candle and I'm going to buy these herbs and we're going to create a little pack, un multito, that means like a little packet of stuff and We're going to make a talisman for you and I'm going to clean you off and then all is going to be well. So what do you do? Of course, you're going to run to the bank and you're going to make sure you get that money. And if you don't have it, you're already in your mind. You already have a pen and paper and a calculator because you're going to figure out how to get this woman that because you got to get this witchcraft off of you. So you go and get this fixed. And you continue to see her once every two weeks because now we have to make sure that we keep it all good. We got to make sure that nobody else is throwing on me. And then after, I don't know, two, three months, everything was okay. But this time, it's not that bad. The witchcraft that's being thrown on you is not that bad. And you're going to need $75 and some stuff from the Botanica. But of course... She's going to make sure that you are okay and that nobody's going to throw on you for this time. We have to undo the job that was done. Oh, you thought I was talking about you? No, that was me. This was me. This is how I used to live my life. And you thought it was about you. Nuh-uh. Yes, Iya Omileti in her older, older, youngin' days, I thought everybody was throwing on me because that is what kept coming up in a lot of the readings. I lived my life this way, in constant fear of who was doing witchcraft on me. I was always worried about making new friends because I didn't know people's true invent- intentions. I didn't know that if they envy me, that's it. That's a witchcraft. And I'm going to get it. And I didn't want that. I was scared of getting too close to people because they could throw on me. And my life really was in constant fear. If someone looked at me the wrong way, it was like, are you working on me? Like my in the back of my mind, this is what I was thinking. Are you working on me? 
Are they on their way right now to go to the botanica to buy that candle and to do witchcraft on me? Is that what they're up to? This was me. And let me ask, is this you? No? Do you know someone like this? I am here to tell you that yes, witchcraft is real. It does exist. And there are folks who love doing bad things to people. This is not most people, though. Let's think about this for a bit. Let's say that you're going to do something. I don't know what that something is, but it's spiritual witchcraft something. Unless you know, you will need to either get a book, go to the botanica, ask a bunch of questions, go to the internet, and you will get what? A list of things you need to get. You will have to get herbs, some foods, jars, needles, doll, whatever it is. And you're going to have to go and take that time to put these things together or bring it to another person to do it for you. What I have just described is that it takes time and money to fight someone back or to work on someone. So it takes time and money. Uh, it has happened, but it is rare. Here's a thought for you. Not everything is witchcraft. Let that sink in for a moment. Not everything is witchcraft. If you are allowing this way of thinking to get to you, then you are a slave to that way of thinking. You will be enjoying yourself and having a good time but the lady across the street looked at you funny. She has to be working on you, right? Then you have to run to the spiritualist because now you feel that this lady is working on you. And there's another 50 bucks that you just left with no, because you had to give it to her. And you had to take time out. And now... I will begin to think that this lady is really up to this because in my mind, that's how it is. So, you know, I love stories. So story time. I am going to tell you this story, but I will protect the guilty to protect their anonymity. <laughs> I'm so sorry if she hears this. This woman would almost go on a weekly basis to a spiritualist in New York. I'm originally from New York. And if her favorite card reader was not available in New York, she would jump on the many trains to go to Queens because that is like Botanica Mecca. There's like three Botanicas in every block. Like really, there's like that many. And around the corners. And she would ask, do you guys do readings? And she would wait there. She would go in and get her reading. And here it was confirmed that her suspicious feelings that one of her sisters was working her, the neighbor right across the hall, and another one downstairs was working her. Oh, and a lady from the church. I forgot that one. To name a few. So this woman was paranoid. Mind you, she's a Christian. To this day, she's still a Christian, but she did believe that she needed extra help to battle this witchcraft. Her life was miserable, to say the least. She became afraid of even going outside. I mean, she was afraid that a single hair might lose. You know, when you're like, I don't know, something itches, you scratch a hair and you will lose a hair strand. She was afraid of that because somebody was going to pick it up right behind it and they were going to work her. She did not believe, of course, she did not believe. After years of this, of living miserably, she came to the foot of Ifa and Egun for a reading. And guess what? None of that was true. 
she did have spiritual things that she had to deal with, but none of those things that were confirmed by other spiritualists over the years was true. Of course she did not believe. She said, and I don't blame her, how could all of those spiritualists be wrong? So she was taken to another priest in the Orisha traditions and again, a bit more work had to be done, but nothing of this witchcraft that her neighbors and family and everybody was throwing on her. It took her a really long time to accept it. But from what I understand, she still fights with this inner conflict. Somebody's throwing on me. Um, you, you have to be careful. And she still struggles. This way of thinking really is engraved and ingrained in her. Is this to say that all spiritualists are bad? No, not at all. That is not what I'm saying. But many say something to either make money or because it's a good thing to have. So this is what I mean. Uh, there are some people, as there are in any tradition, that they don't do good things. So they will say, no, 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 you need this candle and this candle is going to protect you and you need this and then you need whatever it is. So you may have those people and then you have those that they really do believe that if they make this amulet that they know about with this recipe, that it will protect them. So sometimes I don't think it's done maliciously, but if they see that somebody is, oh my God, they're throwing on me right now. They're doing witchcraft on me probably right this second. They feel that, well, if I give you this amulet, this will help you. So I'm not saying that this is all done with bad purposes from spiritualists. It's just, we're talking about the way of thinking. There may be a time to listen. There really is. There's a time to listen on this because it may be truly happening. But this is not addressing the state of mind that folks should live with. Paranoia is not healthy. And truthfully, as long as you put out those negative vibes and put them into you, you will never rise spiritually. I'm sorry, but this is true. Do you feel that witchcraft is involved? If you really do, I would strongly suggest a reading with an oracle, with uh, with a babalao and yadifa and a gungung priest or a good iyalosha and babalosha. Why? Because the oracles, depending on how they fall, they will fall where they need to fall and they will say what they need to say. Here's the, here's the kicker. Hopefully, I don't know, or killing of a chicken. It really starts with you first. Yes, you need priests to help and assist, but it starts with you. And here are some things that you can do to help change your mind for this situation. One, daily affirmations. I can't, I really am an advocate for this because it sets your mind. It just kind of resets it every single day for the things that you need. So for example, if you have an issue with thinking that somebody's throwing on you, maybe an affirmation should be made. You know, something like, uh, Orisha and my eggons protect me daily. And if I do what is supposed to be doing, or, you know, if I am a great person, this will not fall on me. Or, you know, use this one, steal it. Not everybody is doing witchcraft on me. Maybe you should tell that to yourself every day. Not everyone is doing witchcraft on me. So there's that. Two, wake up early and focus on you. Meditate. Have quiet time for you. Everybody thinks that I'm a freak because I pretty much wake up at 4 a.m. every day, but this is my time. This has made me a little more whole and a little more patient and compassionate because 
mama has done everything that mama needs to do. So now I can focus on you. You know what I mean? Three, sleep well. This is a fact. Paranoid people have trouble sleeping. When you don't sleep well, let me tell you, I am one of the grumpiest individuals. Once bedtime has hit and I'm still up, I am, I'm ready to eat you. I am not a happy person. And it's true. You need to have adequate rest to help you sleep. And so much regeneration happens when you sleep, not only to your mind, but your physical body. So sleeping well has to become a priority, especially if you already have this paranoid mentality. You have to sleep and sleep well. I'm going to add a resource that I came across on sleeping and I will add that to the show notes. Number four, write on a journal. Oh, I've said this so many times and just write on a journal. Write your thoughts, write your fears, check out to see if there are patterns and the why. Even when you go to a reading after putting all of that on paper, you may be able to say, but I've had these fears or these feelings. Can you dive into that? You know, our traditions are amazing. And if I can dive into that, if you come in with the right questions, you have it there. Now, if you come to me and you tell me, oh, I, I don't write and I just don't do it. That's okay. I'm sure that you have a smartphone and like the commercial used to say, there's an app for that. You can get yourself an app. You can talk to it. You can dedicate 10 minutes. It doesn't even have to be 10 minutes, five minutes. What is going on? What's going on with you? What's bothering you? What, what, just the what, write it there. And you can create a record that you can go back to. I strongly suggest this to people. It is time for inner work. And when you do this, you're just forced to. It may be a little weird in the beginning, but it really does work. So give it a shot. Write on a journal. It doesn't have to be a special fancy notebook, although notebooks make me so happy. But you can go to the dollar store, a 50 cent notebook, just something for you to write on every day. What's going on with you? What worries you? What are you struggling with? Journal, journal, journal. Number five, read positive books. Put positive things in your mind. Really read them. So here you are and you're like, but Ilya, I don't like to read. You want me to read? I'm not going to read. I'm not a reader and I don't have the time. Honestly, this is just me and you right now. Don't use this as an excuse. There are many apps that have free audiobooks available. Oh my God, there's even people who read books on YouTube. You can search for this. Here, I don't know how it is on other countries. So if you are from different countries, I know that I have listeners in several parts of the world. Let me know what your country does for books and reading and audiobooks. Here in the United States, we have public libraries. And our public libraries, you are able to download an app. And from there, you're able to get free books that you can read, like uh, Kindle books, stuff like that. So you can read those, audiobooks, movies, and music. And I believe they also have magazines, but I'm not sure about that because I haven't searched for magazines. But there are materials that are free and available through the public library. So there are ways that you can feed positivity into your mind. And we're not just talking self-help books, but we're talking about stories, Alicia's. I mean, there's so many great topics that you can use to infuse your mind with positivity. Number six, stay off what I call trash TV. When you watch TV of people fighting and arguing, it's easy for your mind to go, you see, you see, this is what happens. Number six, stay off what I call trash TV. When you watch TV of people 
fighting, arguing, and being conniving with each other, it's easy for your mind to say, you see, you see, they did it on that show. So that lady across the street who gave me that same look, that same look that was on the show, she's doing me in. You see? So I have to go run and I have to fix it and I have to spend all this because I got to fix all that witchcraft because she is doing it to me. And then you internalize this and you're thinking, oh my God, it is true. And then your mind points it out like, yep, it is true. They're doing you in. So feed your mind with positive things. And I mean, those shows can be addictive. I get it. I totally get it. But I do notice that there is a different there's a difference in my state of mind and being when I watch a show that they've been arguing, cursing and conniving and being mean to each other. There is a difference. And I, I honestly, I don't like the way that feels. So stay off of trash TV or at least try to minimize, try to minimize it because it will really help how you view the world. Number seven, do you pray every day? Why are you here if you don't put what you have to work? Pray. All right, so what if you say, well, I'm not initiated. That's okay. You ask your elevated eggs to protect you. Why not? They're right there. They're right there. They're, they're close to you. They can look out for you. If you are an initiated priest, pray, use what you got. Seriously, like Baba Eshu Ogun, hey, look out for me. I'm your daughter. Or Chosi, don't let me just go straight where I need to go. I don't need to go through this crazy path. You know, pray and use, use the tools that you have. They're there for us to pray to and to use. So pray, pray every day. Number eight. Last strategy that I want to discuss. Have you empowered your ori? Your ori is your personal orisha. Have you strengthened it today? How else are you going to steer away from the paranoia madness of, oh my God, they're working on me. If you're not feeding it and you're not strengthening it so that it can guide you to where your destiny lies. This is how it works. You're thinking, oh my God, Doña Pepa, she's working on me. She's right there. She's doing me in. She's doing the witchcraft on me. But since I've been doing my ori work, a little subtle voice whispers, really? Really? That lady is not interested in working in you. She's on a fixed income. That lady could barely walk. She's a grumpy old lady. She watches her novelas and her soap operas all day long. Do you really think that she's going to grab her limited money to go to a botanica to work on you? Really? Maybe next time you see her, you should smile and say, you know, Doña Pepa, I wish that you have a great day. and See what happens. Right? So this could be your Ori talking to you through your challenges with your paranoid state. Now, if you don't want to change and Doña Pepa from across the street gives you that weird look, you will still hear a little voice in your head that says, you see that Doña Pepa? Don't even walk on her side of the street. She's going to grab the dirt from underneath your shoes and she's going to put some witchcraft from her kitchen and she's gonna work on you the moment you leave it's like your mind feeds you what you give it so your ori works it will support you in anything that you desire if you really feel that people are gonna work on you oh my goodness they're gonna point it out to you every single day so you have to work Use words that empower you, not words that work against you. So I am going to put on the show notes some affirmations to help you that you can mention. You can use, you could use it as a starting point to help you against paranoia for witchcraft so that you can start working and changing 
this point of view. So let's review for a bit. Does witchcraft happen? Yes. Yes, it does. But here's the question. Does it happen all the time? Not everything bad that happens to you is because someone threw witchcraft on you. Really. If you are worried about it, go to someone with the proper oracle to assist you in finding this out. If it is there, it will come out as well as a remedy. So we talked about eight strategies that you can put into place right now to help you with this way of thinking, which, you know, it's really not a positive thing for anyone. And it does damage not only to you, but physically as well to live with paranoia. So I'm hoping that this will help you. And if it's not for you, it's okay. But if it'll help someone that you know who feels this way, share it. Because our goal, honestly, all of our goals is to have a happy life in this lifetime, not later. We want to live happily right now. And we all have the power to do it starting today. We've reached the end of this episode of the Arisha Wisdom Podcast. And I want to thank you so much for spending some of your precious time with me. I would also like to thank you for your support and your feedback on past episodes. I appreciate that so, so much. For show notes on this episode, please go to www.orishawisdom.com forward slash session nine. There you will find all of the information that's cheat sheet that I mentioned. Eight strategies are also there because honestly, who doesn't want to have a more positive life? So. Until next time, and may all of the elevated ancestors and all Orisha bless you immensely. Odabo! Thank you for listening to the Orisha Wisdom Podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes at orishawisdom.com forward slash podcast. Can't get enough of Orisha Wisdom? Check us out at orishawisdom.com and subscribe to our community. Remember, the wisdom of Ifa and Orisha is all around us. Be blessed, and until next time.